You are not a nice person if you let people step all over you. I hate to break it to you, but you're a people pleaser. You can still be nice and passionate and considerate when you prioritize yourself. So that when you're ready to work with people, you're doing great and that will help you do a great job. I've had to learn what bothers me and how I like to work from experience. And here's how to find that out and communicate it in a nice way. Hi, I'm Madishu. I'm a full-time singer, songwriter and artist. And I'm here to help you understand how to set boundaries as a woman in the music industry. And if you're a guy watching this and it's helpful, comment down below. First, let's get to the root of the problem. For me, it was coming from a scarcity mindset. In the music industry, especially in the beginning, it seems like every opportunity is worth taking and it feels like it's the first and the last one. When you get paid the first gig, the first studio session, it feels like such a huge deal, especially when everybody around you says that you can't make money as a musician. So I felt like I needed to take every single opportunity and say yes to everything, but guess what? you don't have to do that. If it doesn't feel right to you, it isn't right. And sometimes it might not feel right because you're scared and because the opportunity may seem too huge for you, that's what happened to me in some cases, then I still convinced myself to say yes to the opportunities and it turned out great. But sometimes you get that ick that you don't wanna work with somebody, don't work with them. <laughs> so I had to understand that there's thousands and thousands of opportunities out there for musicians to make a living with music without being famous. And you just have to put yourself out there and go search for them. And the right ones will come to you. So here are the chapters of this video. What kind of boundaries you might be needing in the music industry. Number one, working with clients. A little bit of a backstory. I started making a full-time living as a vocalist and songwriter when I put my services on Fiverr. And in the beginning, I wanted to really take every single project that uh, I was booked with so that I can build that first list of reviews because more reviews on platforms like these mean means more trust for future clients and I've had to realize that if I say yes to a project that I'm not fully confident about and I'm not sure I can do a great job it doesn't mean that me saying yes to the project is the best thing just to get that review even if I do my best and try my best to do a good job for it. And in the beginning, I've had to learn the work process, sending updates, stuff like that, doing the very first orders and having to go through making 10 revisions for one project help, help me understand how to work in order to avoid that. But the point here is that you don't have to stay with that forever. Find ways to adjust your work so that it helps you as well and it doesn't drain your soul. So when I noticed that, I started adding a certain amount of revisions per project and any extra revisions would be an extra payment and I started sending people updates of the process so that again it reduces the possibility of having a revision that says please record the entire track again I don't like the style that you performed in. Another thing that I started doing in order to avoid people cancelling projects is offer free samples. Yes it's a bit of work up front without getting paid but then you're either gonna convince the people that you're the right person for the project or reconfirm that you're the right person for the project or that you're not and they would have cancelled the project anyway. Having reference tracks is also very important. Unless the client wants to work with you, for you, you cannot read people's minds you cannot explain music with words. Working with somebody that gives you instructions like just feel it and make art isn't gonna work because you know damn well they have something up here that they want to happen on the track. And then when you don't deliver that, they'll be like, no, make a thousand uh, changes on this project. Ask for reference tracks. And emotions can also be interpreted very differently. If they say that they want the track to convey a particular feeling or emotion, it might also mean something completely different to you than it means to them. So reference track on the style and performance and emotion is also important, at least to me. So this was one of the boundaries I've set in the very beginning when I've noticed that this isn't working out is if the people aren't providing me with a reference 
I will not work with them. I cannot read your mind. I will also completely refuse to work with people that make me feel inferior or refuse to work on my terms. Be nice reference tracks and uh, don't be rude. Clear communication is something that I value a lot. I understand sometimes there might be language barriers that might make some people sound rude to me. But as a person whose English isn't their mother tongue, I completely understand and I can see and understand when things that might sound rude in English aren't rude in other languages. I've also understood that it's okay to cancel projects and stop working with people that make you feel used and drained of energy because I used to like seeing projects all the way till the end, but it's okay to stop halfway through if things aren't working out. This one time I did 19 revisions. At that point he'd approved the verses, he'd approved the chorus, uh, almost the whole track was good. Apparently he went back, pitched it up, sped it up and said it sounds unnatural when he does that so he wants me to re-record the entire track again to make it sound natural in sped up and pitched up. I was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> 19 revisions and now you're asking me to record the whole track again? So no. So that taught me to not accept that kind of stuff anymore. Number two, sessions. Just like working online, in real life you should also set boundaries. I love sessions, they're a great way to meet new people, network, learning from them, making new connections, but it's just as important to shrink your network when it's necessary. A boundary I've set for myself is that I'm not gonna work in sessions with people that I feel are draining my creativity and passion. Like after all, music creation is supposed to be fun and we're supposed to enjoy the process. And just like working online, I don't like working with people that make me feel inferior. And that's even more draining when you do the sessions in person than when you do them online. If I have no choice but to be in the session, I would just take lots of breaks so that I avoid being in a toxic space. Because some guys can't accept the fact that we can be better at some stuff than them and have just as much experience and skill. And of course, if it's your safety that's at risk, just leave the situation run. Now in less intense situations, again, it's super important to have a reference track. We can't read your mind. Being on the same page in a session is very important. Who is the song for? What are the splits in terms of publishing? What's the purpose of the song? What's the genre of the song? Just agreeing with everything surrounding the song in the session. When you're in a session, you want to work with your strength because you're in a team, there's more people, everybody is super good at their thing and that's why we do these sessions. Let the people do the thing that they're good at and same goes to you. Sometimes in sessions, some people might get a lot more into the song than you are. And some people might be left behind a little bit because of tiredness, writer's block, just not vibing with the song enough. Don't try to force it. Let the people that are really into it do their thing and offer your support whenever you can offer it. Taking a short walk, fresh air or a short break helps also get a new perspective, a fresh mind to be able to go back into the session and contribute more. Sometimes you're gonna have an idea, nobody else is gonna like it, you're gonna have to let it go. Other times you know deep down that this is the killer idea, try to insist a little bit. If still nobody else is on the same page, let it go. Because sessions are about the entire group and not about you as a person. Number three, networking events. Let's face it, same thing goes here. If you feel unsafe, get yourself out of the situation. But there's also a lot of other boundaries that you can set. I am always open to hearing people out, learning about what they do. But if there's a lot of people and you want to meet as many people as possible, it's nice to learn how to get out of a conversation politely. You're not being mean, you're just doing at the event what you came there for and it's not to talk to just one person. Maybe schedule a coffee date, give them your business card, and then you can catch up over a longer conversation later on. Number four, playing live gigs. When playing live, there's a whole different set of boundaries that come into play. Because when you're on stage, you want everything to work out with you and not against you. You want to be as comfortable as possible so that you can put up the best show that you can. Don't be shy and accept whatever the sound technician is doing in the sound check. If it doesn't work for you, mention it and fix it until you get it right. You can't be performing and not hear yourself or not be loud enough or not hear certain instruments loud enough. Don't think that you're being nice and saving their time. 
if you don't get the right mix for your monitors or whatever you need because that's what these people are there for. They're there to help you put on a show. And number five, which is the last chapter, labels, publishers, deals, contracts, and so on. I have been offered many, many record deals from many different types of record labels and publishers, and everybody will literally say the exact same thing. Make sure that when you're signing a contract, you know what everything means, that you've read and understood it and have time to process it. Maybe consult with other musicians or with a lawyer, which is the best case if you have the budgets for it. You can even ask ChatGBT to explain you the contract. Until now, I've only signed two exclusive contracts with my manager and bless my manager, blessing to work with, and my publisher. An exclusive contract means that you can only work with this company and no other company of this type. For example, I can only work with my manager and not have five other managers managing me. And I can only have this publisher and not have other five publishers um, taking care of publishing. There is advantages and disadvantages to both types of contracts. If you sign an exclusive contract and you're not happy with how it's going, then you're literally going to be stuck in that contract, not be able to do anything about it until the contract runs out. Ideally, when you sign an exclusive contract, you want to feel just as free in a way as you did before signing that contract. You don't want it to set you back on your career. You want it to help you step forward and get further with your career. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Stay safe, stay creative, stay passionate. And I hope to see you again on my channel soon. Make sure you check out my music and have a nice day.